Hello, Professor Yap. Why do you have such a big poster of a tree uh, in your room? The tree is standing on land, and you even see a building in the background. But yeah. for me, uh, the most interesting thing is actually the text uh, here below, which focuses on land rights uh, as a social convention. And that's in, in my field in land administration, we ultimately talk about the relation between people and a piece of land or a natural uh, resource. And that's an interesting discussion because it's actually about do other people agree that this piece of land or this resource is yours and do they accept it? And what we do in our field here also is that we try to focus on how do we make sure, how do we fairly assess whose relation it is and how do we document these relations so that later on we do not start to disagree again. When you talk about those land rights, it's always about ownership? No, um, we talk about a lot of uh, other relations because the social convention, as the poster says, can be any type of convention. And, and in many countries nowadays that is interpreted as the, the legal system, the formal written laws. But before there were formal written laws, people had relations with land everywhere in the world and uh, through customary and traditional systems. And, and nowadays, uh, when we, especially when we start documenting, we are kind of often captured by these legal systems, the formalistic systems that might ignore many of these earlier existing relations, which many people in the world still use. And we see something similar in largely growing urban areas where people, uh, yeah, they move in and not always having the money or the time to find a legal access to land, so they uh, informally settle, sometimes we call that slums, and there again the relations exist, but people are not uh, being recognized as such by the government. Now, I'm trying to capture these relations and document them is what we uh, try to do, and that uh, brings us to cadaster and uh, land registration as two terms, whereas cadaster is more the land surveyor's term and land registration more the term lawyers prefer. Okay. Which one do you prefer? Yeah, that's a good question. I called it already land administration with trying to bridge between the two because uh, I have studied both land surveying and law. So uh, for me, both You're sides in are... In, I'm in between and both sides are important. I think only when we have a good cooperative system that brings the two sides together, we actually get uh, where we want to be. And um, so we need to bring it together. And that's also what the term land administration uh, has shown. And when we talk about registration and documentation, well, we are at ITC and we are a remote sensing and GIS faculty. So how does that law part plays together with, with all the technology that we use here? I had a law part describes the relations. As I said, sometimes they're too narrow, but we can expand the laws. But why it fits nicely in ITC is because the core is that we always want to know a piece of land, a spatial representation of where the person has an interest, has a relation. And so the cadastral mapping is often one of the oldest maps that uh, countries uh, have. Governments start making maps when they try to control an area, a territory. And one of the first things they do is make cadastral maps. These are very boring maps with very few on it. I have an example here. There's a, you can see it's just a few lines. It's like the one I have for my house, for instance. Yes, this is, this is actually one from some farmland in my family, or my wife's family, actually, in this case. Uh, but you see there's very few lines. In the past, such maps were a bit, a bit more colorful. This is one from 150 years ago from one of the outskirts of uh, Moscow. And you can see there is quite some uh, nice color yeah, and there there. They, they define very clearly uh, green areas. Yes, and, yeah. and that's because the land use leads to taxation, and governments are also very interested, of course, in what they uh, need to tax. Okay. But, uh, as I said, the laws are limiting to ownership relations, and we have tried to broaden that. So in ITC, uh, over the past yeah, more than a decade already, we've been working first on a prototype for what we call STDM, the Social Tenure Domain Model, which is a software that allows this diversity of people to rent relations, not just ownership, but also customary relations, group relations, even informal relations. And technically, uh, that all turned out to be rather doable. 
So the prototype was developed here at uh, ITC, and then STDM was taken over by uh, UN Habitat's headquarters in Nairobi, where they further did and also piloted it and actually rolled it out in some areas. For instance, in uh, slum areas in Uganda and Kenya, in more rural traditional areas in Zambia. And recently we also had uh, work done in Nepal, where in the area where they had so much damage uh, after the earthquake, so in that okay. way. When you say there are relationships more than ownership, can you give an example? Yeah, if we look at a, a tree, this might not be the right tree, but uh, we often see that in customary systems there is this diversity of land use. So not one person is the sole user, holder or owner of an area, but the number of people jointly uh, have different complementary uh, relations to that. And so it could be that one person o can use the land for having his animals graze and another person has the right to pick the fruit from the tree. And perhaps even a third person eventually can cut down the tree and use the wood. Yeah, these complexities we can handle, uh, especially geospatially, the technology is allowing us to handle that. But often uh, government agencies or uh, professions or the way their laws are written makes it hard for people to open up their mind and their way of working to allow this. And, this is sometimes just fear of change, but can also be vested interest by elites. An example of that is uh, with so-called PES schemes, a payment for ecological services or environmental services. We see... How does that work? Then, then we see that, um, so for instance, UN agencies, international systems, pay people to make the forest greener, that it's more uh, storing more carbon or that it uh, keeps hold of the water and lets it come out slowly so that the water system is sort of all kinds of these schemes. Mm -hmm. But that means people might have to change the way they use the, their land and their resources or they might not be able to do everything they can do today and they get compensated for that. But by simplifying the land use to one dominant quote-unquote owner, uh, we often see that the people that have the biggest impact of having to change their behavior might not be the same ones that get their name in the list and get the compensation. And, and that's, that's really important to, to overcome. Uh, and what we also see is that, of course, this is a, a kind of the example I gave uh, sometimes as a time element. So maybe one group of people uses land for growing crops in the summer, another group can graze their animals there in the winter. But we nowadays also see, of course, in urban areas uh, that we need the third dimension, the height. Mm -hmm. And so we get 3D land information, 3D city models that are needed to capture the complexity of apartment buildings, of roads going through a building, metro lines going under housing estates, etc. where you have different owners and different land use, which can only be captured in a three-dimensional model and not anymore with a 2D map. I think that also is a nice... Uh, ITC topic, this uh, 3D geo information. And, and how does that uh, affect, um, was it taxation or, or oh, yeah, the, you the can chemistry have itself? Uh, tax systems are also still dominantly based on 3D uh, geo information. A lot of information is used. Uh, there are quite some complex methods to compute values uh, based on the characteristics of buildings. But if you add, uh, add the third dimension there, you will, for instance, have to compensate it if you're living on the 25th floor the noise from the street will be very different than when you live on the first floor. And therefore, it will be uh, taxed more or be yeah, better that, that's, for the, that's for the politicians to decide and what, what okay. type of noise. And the same you have with light. If you're close to another building, you might have a lot of shade and not so much sun. There are many elements like that. Okay. Yeah. And we, we also discussed before how remote sensing is playing a part in this cadastre. So what, what changed from how it was done before mm -hmm. to, to how it's done now. Oh, yeah, the, although there is some discussion on the exact number, there's uh, one to three billion people in the world whose land relations are currently not well documented or uh, in a system that gives them any protection or security. And we have uh, SDG 1.4.2, this is one of the indicators of sustainable development goals, which says that by 2030 uh, all Land, people to land relations need to be documented. And mm. to make sure that that really happens, um, we think that you need aerial imagery where people 
can look at the aerial image and then indicate where uh, the boundaries between their interests are. And traditionally we collected that uh, through airplanes. Sometimes when the area is not too densely used we can even use satellite imagery. And recently the UAV, the drones, have made an, an impact on this. And uh, yeah, one of my almost finished PhD students uh, focuses on uh, how we use those systems, UAVs, to capture that. Okay. So that brings us also again to remote sensing. But in ITC, there are, yeah, many, many people in ITC really think from the spatial, because it's also our bread and butter, but we try to take it from the, ultimately from the person's perspective. We say people have relations and we need to describe where the relations are. We're not saying, oh, we see a piece of land, whose would it be? And we start from the people. And I think that, on the one that makes us fit in ITC, but also stand a little bit apart. Do you want to be a geo hero as well? Then take the first step and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to always be the first to know when one of our geo heroes posts a new video.